This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. At Ramsey, we help people build wealth, do work they love, and create absolutely real and authentic relationships. Dr. John Deloney joins me right now here on the show. The phone number is 888-825-5225. He has a brand new book out that is uh, going absolutely bananas. It's done very, very well. Thank you to all of you that have purchased Own Your Past, Change Your Future. It's only 20 bucks at RamseySolutions.com. And uh, the book tour continues. The book came out one week ago today. And so we are going zoom, zoom, continuing to be out there and having him out on the road meeting with you people. He, in, in a few minutes, is going to jump in an airplane and head to Dallas, Texas, right? That's all right. Can't wait, man. We're going to have a blast. going to be a lot of fun. And so by the time you folks in Dallas hear this um, tonight, he'll already be there. So there. That's right. We'll be doing media in the morning and then doing some speaking at some businesses around town, and then we'll be ready to rock and roll the book signing tomorrow night. So tomorrow night, the book signing at Dallas, Texas. That's Wednesday, April 27th, 6 p.m., the Barnes & Noble at Preston Wood Town Center on Beltline Road in Dallas, Texas. Now, Phoenix, uh, we had over 100, 100 to 150 folks show up for the book signing there. So um, it was a madhouse, and we're going. To, I'm going. So Dallas, your 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 reputation's yes. on the line here. And I'm a I'm a Texas kid. You can't do me wrong, Dallas. So show up. Yeah. So we got to have, have fun. You got it. You got to beat Phoenix. Easy. I mean, we're throwing down we're throwing down the gauntlet here. You got to have That's, more more people than Phoenix had. I don't know, man. Phoenix showed up big time. They were awesome. Too. Yeah, Phoenix they were a lot great. of fun. It was good. We'll have a blast. So, and John, you'll be uh, answering questions, talking, signing books, right, so yeah. that kind of we'll stuff. We'll have all kind of fun things. Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't listened yet to the Dr. John Deloney show, you need to tune in and uh, pick that up. Uh, millions and millions of listeners already uh, on podcast. It is uh, a, a, a blast off podcast that has done extremely well on Ramsey, the Ramsey Networks, as well as this new book. So if we were going to distill down in the next moment or two what Own Your Past, Change Your Future is about and who it's for, what is it? It's for almost all of us, um, people who are just trying to figure out what's the next right thing to do in their life. If you find yourself anxious or spun up or exhausted or sitting next to your husband or your wife and you don't even know if you know them anymore, it's for basically all of us. Um, it's folks trying to say, okay, the world has happened to me either two years ago or two, 10 years ago or 20 years ago. What do I do next? Right. And, um, Man, that book walks you through how to own what happened to you and then how to make the next right decisions moving forward, how to heal. Well, it's doing really, really well. Uh, it's, it's highly rated on Amazon all week long. And uh, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, a not-so-complicated approach to relationships, mental health, and wellness. We've sold tens of thousands of copies here in the first week that it has gone out. And uh, I'd love to break 100000 on it. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be fun, man. Yeah. For the first week out, that'd be neat. And um, so it will be on the bestseller list. We think it'll probably be number one. We'll see when the bestseller list comes out this week and how it's done. But um, this comes down to if you've listened to John here on this show or on his show and you said, gosh, I wish I could sit down kneecap to kneecap with that guy. I think I could unpack some things about some of the stuff that's happened to me in the past, the way I'm some of the stuff I'm dealing with right now. Um, well, this is his uh, way of doing that. Yeah. And when you read this book, you will feel like you're sitting having a cup of coffee with John. I have both read the book and had a cup of coffee with John, so uh, I can tell you that they are remarkably similar. And uh, so it's uh, in, for, for better or worse, right? <laughs> but in, in classic Ramsey style, it, it uh, is it's easy. It's not mumbo jumbo. It's easy to understand, uh, but it deals with the person in your mirror and gives you some tools to say, okay, when I'm anxious, this is what I'm doing, or from this trauma that I've dealt with, or these, all these negative people or negative uh, uh, events have too much real estate in my brain. How do I deal with that? This morning I was in a meeting and somebody that works on the, on the team with me said, when I started working with you, you handed me a couple of books and said, if you're going to make sense of what I'm trying to do, read these. And halfway through the first one, 
He's like, I, I don't even know what this person's talking about. And I thought I had handed them three of the simplest books, right, um, from my nerd you world. You are a nerd. Exactly. So. And uh, so this book was a concerted effort. Let's – in, in that person circle back and said, I got this one. This one makes sense to me. I understand what you're doing with yeah. your book, right? Yeah. And so that was really the point, man. It's demystify Just take the, all the, the, the smoke The proven mirrors. stuff that's out there. That's right. Psychology is such a twisted, weird world, yep. and there's so many – uh, such a, a wide spectrum of viewpoints on how to deal with it's like finance, man. Things. Everyone's got an opinion on this thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. And there's a, there's a there's a path that works all the time, every time, and it's not sexy, and it's not fast, and it's the it's 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 not gonna it's not gonna be shiny fireworks in the sky. It's just like it's a decision. I'm gonna. I want a better life than what I have. I want to stop family trauma. I want to be able to sleep when I lay down in my bed. I want to be able to laugh when I get up in the morning, right? I want to live a different life than the one I've inherited or the one I've seen. What percentage of negative uh, psychological things that people deal with came from them being passed down from their parents and their grandparents and their grandparents, grandparents, and so on? What percentage would you say? I would say... If not a hundred, very very close. Well, I mean, sometimes people just have trauma happen to them. Yeah, you you get you get the car wreck, you get the divorce, you get the abuse. Those things happen. I mean, you know, you get mugged. Right, right. That's not life happens. To you. you know, then that that trauma can throw you off kilter. But but but, but how, how you, you respond were, to that trauma is all based on your it's story. It's what you see. It's right. It's, it's the story. way mom and dad deal with um, conflict. It's the way yeah. granddad dealt with. Um, issues that were uncomfortable or with, um, you know, when Billy got arrested or uncle so-and-so, we all have uncle so-and-so got in trouble at school or whatever. That Those are the way we learned how to deal with conflict and how to deal with fights. And you know, Is that somebody else's fault? Or is, is he a victim? That's right. Uncle Crazy's a victim? Or oh, is it? Or, is or it, Uncle right. Crazy's crazy. There you go. You know, and how, how you handle that. Some parents fought in front of their kids, and now there's some research that suggests that um, having disagreements in front of your kids is actually good because then they get to see the disagreement healthy, and then the reconciliation. Healthy, con- healthy conflict. Yeah, not idiotic throwing stuff and, and yelling abusing and screaming each other. and cussing. And, um, yeah. yeah, but th- that conflict. And some of us grew up, my parents took their arguments to the bedroom and because th- that was the narrative of the day. Don't, don't have disagreements in front of your kids. They'll scare them. And now I look back and think, oh, the first couple of years I was married, when me and my wife would have disagreement, my first thought was, well, I guess this is over. I guess, you know, because I don't have a picture of what that looked like. And we had to learn, no, this is degree, disagreements are part of two people doing life together. Here's how we do that honorably. And here's how we do that working towards something, right. not just trying to burn each other to the ground. So that I think all of us have stuff that we have just picked up in the, the, the stories we were born into and the ones we were told. And then it's our job to look and say, I want a different legacy for my family. I want a di- different legacy for me. That's what it and comes down to, owning your past. I've got to make, I've got to make some changes. I'm going to own my past. That's right. Gonna, uh, my family, you know, love them, but this part of it. I'm going to own it yep. so that it doesn't happen again. This part stops with me. It stops here. That's right. It ends here. Yeah. Yep. And that can be something simple or something really, really nasty and dark. That's exactly right. Either way. Everybody in between. Own your past. Change your future. Dr. John Deloney will be signing books Dallas Wednesday, April 27th, 6 p.m. The Barnes & Noble at Prestonwood Town Center on Beltline Drive. Be there Wednesday night. Dallas, you got to turn out. you got to beat phoenix the gauntlet is thrown down john have a good trip thank you my brother appreciate you look i love real estate and i want you to have a house but i don't want a house to have you That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Dr. John stopped by before he jumps on the airplane and heads to uh, Dallas, Texas. So Ken will be with us for the rest of the show. Thank you for joining us. The phone number is 888-825-5225 as we talk about doing work that you love, as we talk about creating real relationships, as we talk about building wealth. Imagine the energy of a jam-packed arena filled with people ready to experience what it means to live life to the fullest. Picture all of your favorite speakers together on one stage, empowering you with tools and principles that will create unstoppable momentum in your life. That is Smart Conference. Yep, Smart Conference is back. It's been three years. We're so pumped to get this event back on the road. We're in Dallas. We're headed your way Saturday, October the 22nd. And Smart Conference is our biggest event of the year. It's a day long. And when you spend that day with us, you will leave smart. It's that easy. You don't want to miss this. Uh, All of the Ramsey personalities will be there speaking on personal growth, on money, on millionaires, on leadership, on mental wellness, on relationships, on your career. It's all going to be there. And you're going to leave with the knowledge and the motivation you need to live the life you want. All of us will be there. Plus, we'll have a marriage segment from our friends Craig and Amy Groeschel from Life Church, one of the biggest churches in America, one of my good friends. He's one of the top leader pastors out there, and man, these really good material on leadership. I mean, on marriage and leadership, but this is uh, on marriage. So be sure and sign up for Smart Conference. It is coming up October 22nd. It is not yet sold out. Tickets are only $39. It's a great price for a full day event. We should charge $339 for this event. Get your tickets right now before they sell out. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash events to learn more. Our question of the day comes from blinds.com. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. That means even if you mismeasure, you pick the wrong color, they'll remake your blinds for free. Free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. Today's question comes from Rachel in Alaska. My husband is a stay-at-home dad, and I work for a school district. We would like to flip our roles, so he's the provider, and I stay at home with our baby. He recently passed an exam to become an actuary and needs an internship before an employer is willing to look at his resume. Child care here is non-existent. With COVID shutting everything down, internships don't pay as much as I make from my job. We own two homes, living in one and renting the other. I'm considering babysitting other people's kids in our home while my husband does an internship, but there is no guarantee my husband will find employment afterwards, and the income gap would leave us unable to pay car insurance and buy groceries. We currently have $2,500 in savings and $1,600 in our checking. No debt outside of the mortgage. Can you offer any advice in trying to make this transition? Okay, well, there's a whole lot of stuff here uh, just all over the place, and I think that we're focusing all of, on all of the hurdles as opposed to maybe some of the sacrifices we're going to have to make uh, that don't require us to sacrifice our income but other types of sacrifices. Um the internship, um, how do we get the internship while he's taking care of the kids? Uh, we're going to have to make some sacrifices, find a way to come up with the money for the child care for him to get that internship. That's where I would go first. If the internship is what is absolutely necessary, it is the gate, if you will, to walk into this future to then get him employed and you be able to switch to the life that you want staying at home, then there are ways to find child care uh, for a season for him to get that internship. And it's just a function of where there is a will, there is a way, an old phrase, but it's really true. So, Rachel, the um, Bible says how the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And the language you're using of absolutism is inaccurate. And it says to me that you're a little bit stuck in victim side. And I want you to get out of that. I want you to rise above that and say, okay, this is hard, but it's not impossible. Okay. And let me give you an example of the language I'm talking about. COVID shutting everything down. Child care here is non-existent. Okay. What you're saying is, is that no one in Alaska keeps children. I'm sorry. It could be very difficult and it could be very hard to find. And it might be a needle in a haystack, but completely non-existent is an overstatement. That's hyperbole. You're exaggerating. Okay. We won't be able to buy groceries. Not true. You buy groceries first. You might not be able to pay something else, 
but you won't be able to maybe car insurance. I mean, that might be the down the line down there, but groceries are first and you'll have the money for groceries. So that's drama. Oh, we're all going to starve to death entered into your discussion here that reveals where your head is on this. Instead of trying to figure out a way to do this, you're throwing up, as Ken said, all the hurdles and all the barriers. That's what this thing drips of Mm -hmm. as I read through it. So here's the thing. This is going to be a tough season for you guys Mm -hmm. to make this transition. It's not going to be easy. Uh, He's going to be working extra delivering pizzas or DoorDash at night. And uh, you're going to be keeping kids and you guys are going to be living on beans and rice and you're not going to see the inside of a restaurant and it's going to be really hard, but you're going to have searched every single rock, every timber, every tree that a child care provider could have possibly hidden behind so you can keep your job and you're going to go do the impossible because you are a victor, not a victim. Is it easy? Absolutely. It's not easy. But it's but when you get to the other side of this five years from now and he has that big job and you're able to be home with the kids like your goal is and he's able to be the actuary like his goal is, it will have been worth it when you look back on it. Well, the scary stuff that she's talking about here is assuming that she's going to walk away from her very good and stable job in the school district. She's not going to do that. You know, to your point, he's going to go work at night when she comes home and he's going to go bust his tail well, he's and got come up with the money for he's child got, care. I yeah, know, but he's, he's got to, but he's got to come up with the money for child care. Yeah. Oh right? yeah. Yeah. And then he goes and interns. Well, you got to find someone to keep them is That's, what she's saying is yeah, the hard but thing. The, but it's, it's, you find somebody. Yeah. They're just, there. You just keep working it. I mean, you keep talking in the church, you, you yeah. know, you, you, if your life depended on it, right, you could find somebody. That's right. But there, she's not going to lose her income. She's going to stay in that job while he's interning. Yeah. And then, then, then they get to make the transition. There you go. That's it. So um, let me tell you, I, we always will participate in something with you that you're doing that's hard. Mm. We believe in doing stuff that's hard that's worth it. Yeah. We you know live like no one else, so later you can live and give like no one else. But living like no one else is impossible. <laughs> We're not going to line up for that one. We're going to tell you, no, you still got to do it. That's still how it is. It's still how we did it, both Ken and I, to get to be doing the things that we do today and to get to be uh, who we are and, and to have had the successes that we've had in different areas. It's We've all paid a price. And sometimes it was an unbelievable tough walk and it was hard and it was scary. Uh, but all we can ever tell you, Ken or me, about anything we're talking to you about is if you do that, it's worth it. The other side of the rainbow, it's there. It's worth it. Go do it. Tyler is with us. Tyler's in Topeka, Kansas. Hi, Tyler. How are you? Doing well, Dave. How are you and Ken? Better than we deserve, sir. How can we help you today? Uh, I got a question on student loans with an expecting uh, wife here. Um, we are expecting in July, oh, $43,000 on student loans. Um, currently have 30 saved. Um, cool. And was wondering with the, with the discussions with the, the freeze right now on student loans, Mm -hmm. whether we should hold on to that money until it is required that we pay those or go ahead and get through delivery and things with the, our new boy here, and uh, then go ahead and make that payment. Oh, I'd get through the delivery, and I'd try to have the 43000 when you get through. Here's the thing. All you've got for the freeze is the interest is frozen, so there's no interest right now. But right. you're in the middle of a pause on your baby steps. You push pause, not play, because you've got a baby on the way, and we don't want you spinning down to nothing with a baby on the way. So we're going to have this pile of cash till baby comes. Now, if ba- what you're saying is baby may come two weeks after the freeze, and so you might have to pay two weeks' worth of interest. Right. Whoopee. Okay. Yeah, it's worth it to have that pile of money so when baby comes, you're okay. Just pay- be prepared to pay a little bit of interest and... The good news is that you didn't have to pay hardly any because the baby's going to come and it's just going to be a little bit. Thank God the whole time it wasn't building up. That could have been. This is The Ramsey Show.
If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit. Whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, best-selling author, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions. On the debt-free stage, Reba and Michael are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Good. Good, Dave. How you doing? Better than I deserve. Knew that was coming. Where do you guys live? Uh, just outside of Louisville, Kentucky. Okay, not too bad a run to Nashville. Good no. to have you. And uh, how much debt have you guys paid off? It was 138000 in 10 years. I love it. Good for you. And your range of income during that decade? It started out around, let's see. You know who the nerd is now. Yes, mm-hmm. I am the nerd. Mm-hmm. So it started out at 104000 and then last year was 133000 Cool. What do you all do for a living? I own my own business and I clean houses. Good. I am a truck driver for a food service company. Excellent. Excellent. Good. Okay. So, what kind of debt was the 138000 It was our house. Whoa! Uh-huh. Looking at weird people! <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thus, the decade. I get it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, tell me the whole story. How far back does all this start? Uh, well, our first big, uh, what was it called when you buy a brand new car? That's not a good idea. Stupid tax. There you go. There you go. Uh, that was our first one about six months after we got married, which today is our 20th wedding anniversary. All right. Oh. So, okay. um, we just kind of kept that around forever. Uh, so, I think it was around 12 years ago before we were like, we need to be done with this, you know. And uh, so, we got a hold of the CDs, the radio program, all that stuff. And then uh, we decided, like, we finally got on the same page. So, nerd. So, you went through Financial Peace University, is what you're saying? Well, we kind of did like the CDs ourselves. Okay. Almost. The at home study. Yes. So, we did that. And then that's when we finally got on the same page and we're like, okay, let's let's actually do this. Uh Um, So, we got rid of that little bitty debt. I think it was like 10,000 in like, what, two months? A couple months, yeah. Uh Yeah. So, I was like, I don't deserve a debt free scream thing because that was like too fast. So, let's (laughs) wait for our house. So, um, so, yeah, we got on the same page and then decided to tackle this after that. Okay, just like that, huh? Yeah, so we, well, refinanced, not easy. <laughs> uh, we refinanced our house 10 years ago, the, yeah. uh, the, the week that our third daughter was born, yeah. and we got it paid off right before her 10th birthday. All right, yeah. well, I like yeah. that. Happy yeah. birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I love it. She's the debt-free kid. There yep. you go. I love it. Very cool. This is fun, you guys. All right, so basically you lived the first half of your marriage uh, normal. Yeah. Had a yep. wake up call and said, okay, no way. And you bla- blaze through the car debt and yeah. then t- take tear into the house. It takes 10 years. Yeah. yeah. That was Good. hard, too. It is hard. Very hard. It's a long time. Yeah. yeah. Saying yeah. no, you know, mm-hmm. keeping really old cars. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. our cars are older than our kids. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so now it's like, oh, we get to save up and actually get some nicer things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so that's really fun. You know, we always talk about in these journeys, you know, what's on the other side of this for folks, right? Yeah. And it's always something a little bit different. You got the kiddos, you're talking about cars. But as you look back on that journey, you've mentioned a couple of times, it was really hard. There's some stories there. Uh, a, was it worth it? And B... What are you most excited about in this future of truly being debt-free? No house payment, nothing. 
Well, uh, in the immediate future, I think we're going to baby step some of the things in our house that needs to be replaced. Like we're going to start with a toaster. <laughs> oh. And we're going we're to work okay. our way up to a little bit newer cars. So that's what I'm really excited you, about. You, you like a good piece I, of toast. I, I understand. Yeah, toaster. We're, we're heading home, getting me a toaster as soon as I do this dead free scram. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It, was, it was totally worth it. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was just hard. Probably the hardest thing for me being the nerd is realizing like my way is not exactly the right way, you know, mm. you know, kind of slow down and bring in the free spirit and kind of work together and realize mm -hmm. it's okay once we finally decide like, okay, this is what we're both going to do yeah. and then go for it. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. All right. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? You paid uh, off your house and everything by what age? Mm -hmm. Uh, she. I just turned forty. Mm -hmm. uh, and I turned forty-five. Okay. Mm -hmm. now you're really young. You have paid mm -hmm. four houses. Yep. yep. This is pretty cool. What's this house worth? Uh, I think it's about two hundred, two fifty. Yay! Somewhere around there. Feels pretty good, doesn't it? Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so what's the secret to getting out of debt? House and everything. A lot of people think they'll have a mortgage their whole lives. Mm. Yeah, no. You want to take that one? Um, just really getting on the same page and deciding what you want to do. And, um, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it for me, I think. And by that, she means the free spirit gets on the nerd page, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and me calming down, too, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I can be a bit intense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you give a little grace, and he yes. and he tightens up a little bit, yes. a little bit and yeah. we meet in the middle there, and because we have a shared goal, yes. Yeah. And the goal is uh, to be debt free, house and everything, yeah. and yeah. now you can do anything you want to do, yeah. including get a new toaster. Yeah. There you yes. go. Yeah. There we yeah. go. All Can't right. be about that. Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> so if you live like no one else, later you can live and give like no one else and get a toaster. Oh, I thought you were going to say if you and live like no one else, later you can live and eat toast like no one else. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm, I'm looking forward. I, all of a sudden, I'm thinking about a piece of toast tomorrow morning. I mean, it's something I haven't had in a while. Come on, Ken. <laughs> Seriously. killing me here. I'm telling you. <laughs> Who doesn't love a good new toaster? <laughs> mm -hmm. I love it. Way to go, you guys. Thank Way you. to go. We're very proud of you. All Thank right, you. bring the kiddos in. Tell us their names and ages. Well, so we have Hannah. It's 14. Mm -hmm. Elena is 12. Evie is mm -hmm. 10. Mm -hmm. And then Dylan is 7. All right. And so the 10-year-old is ready to go here. This yes. is the debt-free scream that matches. I love yes. it. It's very cool. I love it. Good stuff, you guys. Thank you. We got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you, How Ordinary People Built Extraordinary Wealth, How You Can Too. That is the next chapter in your story. You've done all the stuff. You're Baby Step 7. You're ready to go. You're going to be unbelievably wealthy. It's going to blow your mind where this ends up if you stay on track. So I'm very proud of you. Also a copy of Total Money Makeover for you guys to give away and be a blessing to someone. Stir up a ruckus somewhere with that for me. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what I like doing, stirring up a ruckus. I'm pretty good at it, too. <laughs> All right, Reba and Michael, Hannah, Eleni, Evie, and Dylan from Louisville, Kentucky. 138000 paid off in 10 years. That's their house and everything. They're weird people. 104000 to 133 income. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, two one. one. We're debt-free! This is how it's done. Oh, my goodness. That's powerful. Okay, uh, so she cleans houses and he drives a truck. And they're 45 years old and they have paid for a $250,000 house. I don't know what neighborhood you grew up in, but in my neighborhood, we call that impressive. Yes. Yes. That's pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, you know, you don't have to be making $500,000 a year, some kind of specialist doctor or something to no. do this stuff. People are doing it every day yep. from every walk of life in every area of the country, in every situation. They're making the decision to be intentional and turn this thing around. It's very, very possible. And, um, you know, you got to get on the same page. We always hear that. You got to be on a budget. We always hear that. You know, you, you've got um, the communication in a marriage is always vital. These are the ones that always come up over and over and over and over and over and over again. You can watch literally now thousands of debt free screams on YouTube that are posted there. And there is a track that runs through all of them. Yeah, it's really true. And, you know, it's always special to see a family with younger kids uh, reach this moment, this pinnacle, uh, because now we're talking about their future uh, and how it affects how they grow up. I mean, they, they got kids that are preteens, they've got teens, and it changes everything for this family. It's not just the financial piece. I mean, that's worth it. 
in and of itself, but the ability to then craft a future. Uh, I, I don't want people to miss what you say all the time. This idea of live like no one else, live and give, that's giving to their kids. That's giving, obviously, in their community. And uh, I got to tell you, I, I love that the truck driver and the small business owner, you know, cleaning houses, uh, untold amount of hours she probably worked and, and just uh, it's, it's a phenomenal testimony to struggling now to prosper later, you know, and, and everybody wants to prosper. Few are willing to struggle. Yeah, you gotta you gotta do the you gotta do the thing, man. I mean, it, no one wins on accident. Mm-mm. It is a series of intentional decisions, developing into habits, developing into uh, just you know, redefining who I am. I am not that person anymore. I used to be that guy, but I'm not that guy anymore. And uh, I, mean, I used to be a guy with a mortgage. Now I'm not a guy with a mortgage. <laughs> That's I like right. that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool stuff. This is the Ramsey Show. Ramsey personality is my co-host today as we take your questions about work that you love, how you build wealth, and how you create real relationships. Stephanie's with us in Louisville, Kentucky. Hi, Stephanie. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thanks for having me. Sure. What's up? Well, um, so COVID was actually a kind of lucky thing for us. Right at the very beginning, um, we were able to buy our first rental property um, right when rates were low, but before housing prices just skyrocketed. Um, it came with a two-bedroom house and a three-bedroom with an extra office that they've been using as a fourth bedroom um, double wide. This, the regular house, it didn't really need a whole lot of work, even though it hadn't been lived in in a while. Um, so we we threw some paint on it, um, did a couple of small things, and have been renting it out. I would like to fix up the double wide. It needs a lot of work, though. Um, and I'm this since this is new to me. Um, my husband grew up flipping houses, and he doesn't really want to participate beyond like giving advice. Um, so this is kind of my my little project, um, but I don't really know where to draw the line as far as how much to cash flow for it because you know at the end of the day it's still a double wide. Um, but I think that it would be, I mean it, it it's already there, um, and I'd like to get more rental income out of it, and I think. You know, long term, it might be a good thing. Um, I, you know, I don't want to be a slumlord, but I don't want to uh, make it the Taj Mahal either because it's still going to be a 30 year old double wide. So I'm not sure, I guess, just how to go about that. Is there like a certain number as far as how much I should put in? You know, that should be my absolute cap as far as what to put into it. Um, well, what, what, you have to, what you have to consider is, is that the long term play is the thing's worth zero. Yeah, that's where it's going. Yeah, I can't long. imagine it'll be. Uh, there's more a day. Than about there's 10 a day years. that it does, they don't go up in value; they go down in value. Period. Yeah. Okay, so there's a day that it's worth zero. So that that tells us that's a different formula than fixing up the house, which is going up in value. Okay. Yeah. And, and so it's a different different way of looking at it, and so forth. What do you think you could rent it for if it was fixed up? Uh, if it's three bedrooms, I could probably get 15 to 18. If it's four, um, somewhere in the 16 to 20. Okay, range. let's call, let's call it, let's call it, let's call it, you're talking $1,500 a month. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. That's an impressive figure. All right. So we're going to get 1500 bucks a month. Um, 
and uh, what would you talk about spending on it? Because basically, here's let me let me let me go ahead and limit you. All right, mm-hmm. you want to recoup it fast with fifteen hundred yeah. a month, because your other option is sell it and move it off the property before it goes down in value further. Yeah. If you if you're gonna keep it, you're gonna burn it to the ground, like driving a car into the ground kind of thing. And so mm-hmm. you want to recoup everything that you put in it with cash flow off the rental. And so if you if you're making eighteen thousand dollars on it and you spend thirty six thousand dollars on it, it's two years before you even get your money back. And it's not going mm-hmm. up in value; it's going down in value. So this is a pure. pure I'm going to trade some cash up front for a $1,500 a month income that will last for a while. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you, your limit is a max of 30 Okay. Well, how much have you got to spend on it? Well, I, my gut tells me we, you know, I don't want to put more than about 50 into it. We've already got 30 put away um, for just kind of yeah. whatever we happen to. I, I, to I, if I were in um, your shoes, I wouldn't put over 20, 25 in it. Okay. I'm going to fix it. Because you're basically, you're trading that 2025. 20, you're going to get that back, and only then are you making money. And from then on, that's the money that you make until it goes down to complete seed, and it's going to go down to mm-hmm. seed. That's How many it, square feet is the double wide? It's big. It's bigger than my house. It's um, 1,800 square feet. Mm-hmm. Okay. What could you sell it for today? Um, Somebody move it off the property. The three, three to five range, because... Um, it, we, someone actually was interested in it and got a quote for, um, 15,000 to actually move it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not really habitable right now. It's got a lot of holes in the walls mm-hmm. and, um, a skylight that's leaking, but okay. if we were to fix it up, would take out. I'm going to, I'm going to change my mind. This is okay. a piece of trash. I'm going to sell it. Yeah. Okay. You don't want to deal with what this is going to be for the next eight years, 10 years. It's going to be a mm-hmm. constant headache. Yeah. It's not, you know, okay. it, it's just going to be a problem and it's not going up in value. I'm going to sell it for five. I'm going to take the 30 to 50 that I was thinking about spending in the wrong place. And I'm going to build a little property up there or something that goes up in value. That's exactly where I was leaning, Dave, is what could you build? If you want a rental property that bad, what could you build over time? Yeah. That's going to. Build on, on the same yeah. foundation yeah. that's there. Yeah. Well, yes. not necessarily well, the not foundation, necess- but yeah. maybe maybe use the same septic system or the underground utilities that got there. Some of the some of the infrastructure there, yeah. and um, I'm I'm just going to be thinking that way. Even if it takes me two or three more years to save up and spend a hundred on something up there, I don't care. Whatever you want to do, but I just want to think. I always buy real estate with a twenty year, fifty year mindset. I never buy it with a two year mindset. Okay, I just don't do it. I, and consequently, I, the number of pieces of real estate I have sold in the last 30 years is one, two, three. I've sold three pieces of real estate. Everything else I have bought, I've kept. And that, that's the way you make money in real estate. You don't make money in real estate. Now, you can make money flipping properties, but you don't make money in real estate with double wides. Now, you do make money in real estate with double wides uh, if you buy them on cash on cash basis. And the cash you put in, you may, like I, I know a guy who owns a trailer park, mm-hmm. okay? And that thing prints money, <laughs> okay? But, you know, he, he's got $5,000 trailers right. all over this park, you know, so like fifty or $100,000 worth of these things sitting there. And the stinking thing's throwing off fifty or 100000 a year. Right. So he doesn't care if they're going up in value. Right. He doesn't care if they're going down in value. Sure. But basically, the thing is gradually deteriorating back to the earth. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's not going to be worth and anything. I just wonder, with the husband having a background in this, and she seems like she was going to do the work, he knows I that. wonder what they could build a 1,200-square-foot building for. I, I don't, you no. know. It'll, it'll, take, it'll take a lot these days. Yeah. But, yeah. But still, yeah, I, I'm just going to go that direction long term. I'm not screwing with this thing if it's me. You do whatever you want to do. I'm not stuck up. It's just a matter of math for me. Bethany is in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Hi, Bethany. How are you? Good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Um, my husband and I are on baby step four and five, and we've got three kids. Um, he is looking at a career change that would take us back to school for about five years. Five years? So are, What's he studying? Uh, doctorate in psychology, so society. Okay. So he wants to be a psychologist. Yes. Okay. Um, anyway, so we're saving to go back to school, 
Um, we're assuming that he won't be able to work full time while he's in school, so we're just trying to save up as much as possible. Why? And I was. Um, he could work full time and complete a doctorate in five years. Sure, he could. Has okay. he got his undergrad? Um, yes, yeah, but it's in engineering, so it's a it's a big career change. Okay. Well, I've I got two little kids. I'm doing this at night, and and it maybe takes me six years, but I think you can do it. I think you can do it in four, and do it part time. I, I mean, it does not take that to get a doctorate. You've got to do you got to do some undergrad studies to get some foundational mm -hmm. things, some prereqs under your belt, and then you got to yeah, go do the grad that. work, and and you know, then you got to go through the doctoral process, and that can take some time. But uh, um, I, I'm going to roll up my sleeves and knock this out. But I'm I'm not quitting my job. No, absolutely not. He doesn't have to do that. And you guys need to dive in and get a lot of research and a lot of confidence in the clarity behind that. But that's absolutely, Dave's absolutely right. And it, it, it might delay a little bit, but it's also going to, the return in, in this delay is that there is no interruption of income and you guys aren't unnecessarily sacrificing financially. Now he's going to sacrifice some sleep, but it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. To go get to live his dream. But yeah, I, I, no, I'm going to sort of goof around at this, and I'm going to work part-time, and my family's going to starve while I do it. No, not something I'm signing up for. Yeah. No, I think we're going to, I think we're going to roll up our sleeves and get some stuff done here. If that, that, if, again, that's what we do at the Ramsey House, and that's how we answer it here. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? To get your daily dose of advice on life and money, check out all of our shows from The Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts. about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, best-selling author of the book, Paycheck to Purpose is my co-host today as we teach people how to build wealth, do work that they love, succeed in their careers, create amazing and real relationships, and deal with mental wellness of all kinds. This is your show. It's a show about your life and your money. A free call here at 888-825-5225. Now, Ken, you work with people on their careers, being successful in a job, in a chosen vocation to live the life that you want from paycheck to purpose so that you can be successful. And our heart here at Ramsey is to always help people be as successful as they can in every area of their lives, and career is one of them. Yeah, if you think about how much time you spend at work uh, in a week, a month, a year, and over a career, it's 90,000 hours is what the average American will spend at work. Well, then it ought to be about more than just money. We want you to make a lot of money. We want you to also experience more meaning. So money and meaning is what we're focusing on uh, on the Ken Coleman Show as a part of Ramsey Solutions. And, you know, when we realize that in many ways it is your job and the ability to advance professionally that allow you to get out of debt faster, well, that's certainly those strategies are why we take that very it affects seriously. Your marriage, it affects oh, your man. health. Yeah, your all of these things are interconnected. That's right. And when you can get all these things lined up and aligned mm -hmm. uh, with your values, yep. then you, you know, your stress level goes down, your Big peace time. goes up, your smile is more often. And so, I, I don't know how much it's exaggerated because the news these days is pretty much all written for the National Enquirer by all of these. I mean, it's all like drama and hyperbole and everything. It, it, I, we do miss Walter Cronkite. but mm, um, True. Because, I mean, everything's got a slant to it and yeah. so forth. But apparently, at some level anyway, based on several articles that have come out uh, with Elon Musk buying Twitter, 
that the uh, there's a lot of people that work at Twitter, the the woke type people oh, yeah. that are very, very, very stressed out, very upset, uh, melting down in various ways that uh, they can't work there if he owns the place. It's absolutely true. Uh, Washington Post reported several conversations they had with Twitter employees when it was announced uh, on Monday of this week that uh, that the deal is going to go through. And were comments like, I'm so stressed out about this, I forgot I have COVID, was a direct quote. <laughs> One was, uh, um, I literally can't speak. And yet they were speaking, speaking when they said that. Um, and now it's gotten to the point that Twitter leadership is actually concerned about this. It's gone beyond, you know, hand wringing on Twitter itself. They took to the platform themselves. And, you know, uh, the sky is falling. Um, you know, all these horrible things about Elon Musk, who, by the way, has stated very clearly that the reason he wanted to buy is because he, he didn't want anybody's speech to be altered at all so it's about free speech but this is apparently a uh an attack on democracy so here's where we stand today dave so twitter leadership has decided that no changes can be made to the actual platform at all without the singular approval of one vice president because they are concerned this is a public statement by the company they are concerned that uh, some disgruntled uh employees would try to sabotage the product hmm Okay. So now we've got so, some mis- Let's just stop for here. a second there, though, right there. I mean, <laughs> you get past Elon Musk as a person. I don't know anything about him. Um, makes battery cars and spaceships, right? right? I mean, that's... <laughs> you got right. it. So, yeah, you got um, it. I'm I'm not a I'm not a I'm ambivalent about him. I don't know. I right. don't know enough to say right. I mean, he might be a great guy. He might be a horrible guy. I sure. really don't know. What I'm what I, the principle I want to dial in on here is for our listeners. Mm-hmm. You can take a lesson from this situation. Okay. Don't work for someone that you hate. Don't work for a company that you're ashamed of the leadership or their values. Go find another job. That's right. The reason is very simple. You will not be good at what you do. It's impossible to compartmentalize enough to be excellent at what you do when you detest the product, the, the owner, the leadership, mm-hmm. be, you know, and, and because you're not aligned, your values are not aligned. And so all of that to say, you're going to have trouble in a situation like these Twitter employees are in prospering, being successful. If you have this kind of angst, about your new boss. That's exactly right. And so uh, what you should do is go find another job. Yeah. It's, it's totally, that simple. It's, and, and, you know, you don't have to be stressed. No. You don't be freaked out because you can be hired in about 20 seconds out there right now. There's a there's a war on for especially tech people, right? Mm-hmm. That's right. And if you know how to work at Twitter, somebody will hire you. And, and But if it, I don't care. You know, I think that McDonald's makes horrible food. Then don't work at McDonald's. But you don't get to tell McDonald's how to work. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to tell people how to do stuff, then you got to go build you a company. That's correct. If you are actively trying to hurt the company you are pulling a paycheck from, I believe it's tantamount to stealing. It is stealing. I really believe that. Because here's the deal. The minute you are at a point where you are trying to hurt the company that is paying you, or you are feeling any kind of other negative emotion, you will not be able to handle it you can't keep doing it not only succeed it's, it's, but it's, it's just it's called cognitive dissonance okay yeah it's two things in your brain that don't both yeah. they can't both be there at the same time right and be healthy you've got to be that's a psychopath right. that's to right. compartmentalize at this level right. you cannot do it right and so to to be successful in your life embrace the journey the thing has changed yeah and uh, you should not work for not for not for the sake of the people. And it's not a matter of you're protesting by leaving. If you want to say that, that's OK. Yeah. But but the um, but but the deal is. It's not about the company and it's not about Elon. It's that's not correct. about that. It's about you. That's right. You cannot be your best version of you. The most successful, peaceful, mm-hmm. fun version of you when you work at a place that is not aligned with your values you that's think right. they're crooks that's right or you think they're going to do harm harm to society yeah. or you think they're a narcissist or you think they're whatever you should not work there that's right 
And so we have no problem. I have no problem with these young people or however old they are being so upset about uh, Musk taking over. Uh, but you need to leave. You need to leave, leave soon. And so the professional advice here is it's going to take six months for him to take over ownership. That's what Twitter's board has said. So you have six months. And I'm trying to make this relevant to people that are listening and watching right now, because if that, something you, like this you happens. If you don't work at Twitter, you work at anywhere else. And the, something Joe's happens. Hardware Joe's Hardware Store. And Joe sells it to Henry. And you don't like Henry. You don't like Henry. Well, then you should, you know, you don't get to tell Joe and Henry how to true. do the hardware deal. That's their business. They own it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Snowflake. Yeah. So you don't get on. to tell them how to do their thing. Yeah. If you want to tell somebody how to do something, you got to be the boss. It yeah. means you got to start something that somebody can bitch about. You got to grow something that somebody can bitch about. So you got to get up off your butt and go do something. But you can't. You don't get to tell other people how to do that. You don't get to tell me how to drive my car. No. It's my car. No. But you do no. get to leave. Unless you're a policeman. Yeah. And then you can. <laughs> but other than that, you can't. That's a good point. <sighs> That's happened before. (laughs) This is a Ramsey show. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. Personality is my co-host today as we talk about building wealth, doing work that you love, creating real relationships, all right here on The Ramsey Show. Phone number is 888-825-5225. John is with us. John's in Tampa. Hi, John. How are you? Good, sir. How are you doing today? Better than I deserve. What's up? So I have my wife in the background listening. She works in mortgages, some prior Marine Corps veteran. We recently sold our property that we owned and we stood to gain $175,000 from the property. We own another house and our goal is to be debt free. We follow we follow your principles, we both go to church. And we owe about 100 uh about $120,000 in the property and an $18,000 car payment. Uh today when I finish work, I'll be going to pay off that car. Uh our question uh collaboratively is do we do a recast and put Fifty thousand, sixty thousand down on the house and pay it off in a year, or do we go out and pay it off outright? Our savings, we have about thirty thousand dollars in savings. So, just sort of wanted to hear your perspective. So, if you pay it off outright, how much is left in savings? There's about thirty-five thousand. So you wouldn't have to touch pay. that. Um, no. Okay. So, uh, as a as a whole, there be okay. So why yeah, would you not just pay off your house and your car today? Our biggest worries is that if we're in a if we if we find ourselves um, in, in a recession or a, uh, a housing market uh, issue, we wanted to have money to potentially go and buy a house on a cheap, potentially a, a re, not a refinance. What do you call them? A, um, a foreclosure. Um, we just want to hear your perspective. So you would not pay off your house in order to maybe buy a foreclosure if the housing market tanks. That, that's our idea. Or our idea is to have, you know, have that amount of money set aside. Okay. I would tell you, regardless of inflation and regardless of recession, that your best goal, your best process is to never buy a rental property except with cash and to never do that until your personal residence is paid for. 
And so that that set of principles that I've used in my life and for millions of other people would lead me to pay off your house and your car today. So pay off, pay off the house. If it wasn't a rental property, it was a secondary it was a secondary. I would be debt here. free before I wrote any checks to buy rental property, and I would only pay cash for rental property then. So the point being, we're going to pay off this other property. We're going to pay off your house. Your house. You're going to pay off your car. You're going to be a hundred percent debt free, and have thirty five thousand dollars left in the bank. You've got all of your income now to start saving to buy a foreclosure when the housing market goes down someday. I don't know when it's going to go down. Uh, not soon enough right. to change this answer. Okay, so give, what you're saying is give you a call back in a month and scream on the air that we're debt free. There you go, brother, or next week if you want, yeah. you, or, or tomorrow if you want. But yeah, because <laughs> you're debt free, pay off everything. That's what I would do. Listen, something's uh, the the, uh, the worry, the angst that you have around the economy. You're watching the news too much. Number one, you need to turn the channel off. But number two. Uh, the worry in the, it's real, but there's no sense in just bathing in the blood every night, the blood of the newscast. And so, uh, 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 you know, the angst that I hear, what, what you what you don't see coming is that when you pay off all of this stuff, you're going to get peace. Yes. And you don't even realize that that's there. So because a hundred percent, we've done detailed research, a hundred percent of the foreclosures occur on a home with a mortgage. Mm. Yeah, it's amazing how that works. Suzanne is with us in Pensacola. Hi, Suzanne. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Um, I just turned 74. I'm a disabled vet and a widow. And the debt I have, I'll make a payment this month and it'll be under $3,000. So if you don't mind, I'd like to add something. And that is my boy, my husband met his wife before they were married. And this is what I told him. I said, son, you hold the ones you love with your arms, but because we're Christians, the Lord gave you a divorce decree. That's your waistline, not that you're supposed to use it. But as your grandmother would say, my mom raised seven of us. What do you think the good Lord gave you two feet for? Don't you think you ought to use them? I said, your daddy and I used at a time or two, and we had 48 plus years. So I know finances plays a lot in marriage and you're bound to disagree because you're two individuals. Just don't forget your feet and you'll come out okay. All right. My How can I help you is, today, Miss Suzanne? My question is, I don't understand, you know, stocks and bonds, and that's my next thing. And it keeps talking about investing in gold, and I don't understand what cryptocurrency is unless it's by um, bitcoins or whatever. So is there a book I can you know, get to help me understand any of this before I invest? Okay. Um, that's a really good question, and it is the proper question. Never invest in something until you understand it. That is a rule. Go slow. That's a second rule, so that you don't invest in something you don't understand. Um, if you're going to follow what we teach and what I personally do, Suzanne, I'm 61, um, is I don't buy anything except good mutual funds, and real estate that I pay cash for. I don't buy gold. I don't buy silver. I don't buy bitcoins. I don't buy anything that has a long track record, unless it has a long track record that is good. Gold does not have a long track record that is good. Real estate does. Mutual funds in stocks and bonds, the, some mutual funds have a good long track record. And so I want you to buy like you were buying a home in a good neighborhood. And Bitcoin's a brand new neighborhood that's unproven. It may turn out okay, but it's brand new. They, the houses all may fall down too, but it, uh, it, to push this metaphor to the brink. But um, but it's uh, it's you know I don't own any Bitcoin, not one, and I don't own any gold except I got on a little bit of a gold ring from my class ring, and that's about it. Uh, I'm not even big on jewelry, so uh, you know it, it's pretty simple for Dave. Now, as far as the book to read. Um, uh, there's obviously entire libraries full of financial books out there that you could read, and you could really go down the Alice in Wonderland rabbit hole. If you want to get a basic understanding of what I'm saying, you could watch the investment lesson, and it gives you enough detail to understand how mutual funds work, how stocks and bonds work, uh, so that you can begin to get a grip on understanding and beginning to talk about investing. 
I will give you that as my gift. And uh, you can uh, sign, I will sign you up for Ramsey Plus, which puts you into Financial Peace University. You can watch all the lessons. You can do the budgets in there. But certainly jump over at a minimum and watch the investing lesson. It will show you the ABCs of investing in a way that helps you really, really understand it. Yeah, I think that's really smart. I think she needs a, a really healthy dose of wariness. Don't let anybody look at you and go, just trust me, Suzanne. No, no. don't ever trust them. Make sure that you understand it from a crystal clarity that allows you to then be confident and say, this is what I want to do. I think that's the great lesson from Dave. I think an investing lesson is going to give you the strategy. It's very easy to understand, and it's time-tested. We, we had a meeting the other day. We were talking about the strategy that you've been uh, espousing for years. I mean, it just flat out performs. It works. Well, a guy came, it does. And a guy came up here at the commercial break just a minute ago and brought us a book. It's from true. Financial Peace University book from 1997. He went through <laughs> the class. Uh, now a Baby Steps Millionaire. Oh, yeah. And uh, the lesson that is in that book, that three ring binder that he brought up here that we used to hand to build those in the office because that, we were teaching it with an overhead projector in 1997. The, the investing lesson that is in that book is very, very similar to the lesson that you will get on Financial Peace University today. And that doesn't mean that Dave Ramsey hasn't kept up. It means that uh, the advice still works. Hello. That's correct. And it's still what I do to this day. I did it in 1997 personally. Um, and, you know, it's like, eh, do you do that with your own money? Yes, I do that with my own money. That's an acid test right there. I mean, you should really... Are you putting your money in this? Yeah, I am. Well, okay. Then I'm, that makes me think about it. Uh, good questions, Miss Suzanne. You hold on, Kelly. I'll take care of you. Chaos. That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper, Jumpstart Your CFO Career. Coleman Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. We're so glad you are here. Landon is with us. Landon is in San Diego, California. It says on my screen, Landon, that you are de debt free, man. Way to go. That's right. I'm, I am debt free now. Very cool. How much did you pay off? I paid off $147,000, 532 and 76 cents. Good for you. And how long did that take? Um, it took approximately 22 months. Good for you. Whoa. And your range of income during that time? Um, started off around 73000 and by the very end of the journey, I got up to about $119,000. Cool. What do you do for a living? Um, I'm a certified public accountant who works in a tax. Good for you. Okay. 
Okay, so in 22 months, you barely made enough to pay off 148. So you must have had some money in savings or sold something. How'd you do this? Correct. Um, so I actually am by nature a saver. So I had a, a really healthy emergency fund around um, $10,000 at that time. And then I had a bunch of um, money tied up in single stocks in a brokerage account around $30,000. Um, it took me some time to like let go of the brokerage account just because I'm a saver by nature. I just um, really love spent so much time accumulating all those stocks all, all of those years. So it did take me some time to get plugged into to really let go of that amount. Cool, cool. And and then you went on just beans and rice, rice and beans. What kind of debt was the hundred and forty eight thousand? So nineteen thousand of it was a car loan, and then the rest was all school loans. Cool. Did you keep the car? I did keep the car. Good, um, I good. just realized that the the school loans were the problem. The car, yeah, the car was a big debt, but the school loans were the um, the tail that wagged the dog. Amen. You're exactly right. Good conclusion. I agree with you. Well done. Well done. How old are you? Um, I'm 25. What made you decide to do this when you're like 23 years old? <laughs> um, so. In my household, like my parents went through FPU um, many years ago, so your name wasn't like an unknown. And my home church, from time to time, will sponsor um, FPU classes. Um, but like the the real key turn was when I went to the mailbox one day, actually, and I got a magazine. It was a a money magazine, and it had your face, this crazy guy on there, with cutting up credit cards. It was it said um, the debt slasher, how broke millennials are flocking to financial guru Dave Ramsey and is his advice sound and I was just like like something just clicked there and I just had to listen to the show and I was like is it true that Dave Ramsey helps people pay off tens of thousands of dollars of student loans and I just was listening binging podcast after podcast and I just heard a lot of stories where people or couples um singles like me were just paying off tens of thousands of dollars and I just it kind of was off to the races at that point good for you very cool very cool. Well, the interesting thing was that article was written to trash me. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> but it turns you on, makes you listen again, because you're a financial peace baby. You came out of a home where parents did this, and you'd remember hearing it at your church. So even that article turned out to be good for me. Who knew? <laughs> so great. They trash you, and, and, and then literally— and then, and then Landon ends up getting yeah, out of debt. He's the exhibit A. Yeah. Uh, you, know, the, you know, actually, are you a Gen Z or millennial? Uh, millennial. Yeah, you're right there on the edge. So good for you. Wow. Way to go, Landon. You're a stud, man. You knocked this out. So what is the secret to paying off 148000 in 22 months? You pull 30000 out of a brokerage, 10000 out, so that's forty. That leaves us 108 to knock out. That's $50,000 a year, making 73 to 119 You were on beans and rice. Yeah, um, I definitely would say the bud is super important. Um, but for me, it was more about perseverance and staying dialed into the plan and the process um, since it was never going to be a quick two to three months, um, but more of a year long journey. I think when I first looked at it, I was thinking three years time frame. But um, and you guys always talk about on the show how it's a marathon, not a sprint. And it was for me, it was looking for small wins and momentum boosts throughout the past two years. Um I think things from going from asking my manager, my boss, like, can I please get double overtime? Can I get time and a half? Can I get any extra hours um, to get it, delivering a pizza and getting a $30 tip? Those were just little um, victories along the way. And I think the biggest momentum was like listening to the debt free scream after debt free scream, listening to the podcast, trying to dial in and see if there's anything I'm missing. Is there any tips and tricks that tips or tricks that other people are doing that I could apply in my own life um, from selling things on eBay or doing Amazon or anything like that. And I, I definitely won't say it was an easy journey because I think for most of the process, it was um, consistent 80 to 90 hour um, work weeks in and out. And um, there was many nights where I'd only get maybe three hours of sleep. And when tax season ended, like a lot of my friends were like, Oh, we need to go party. We need to go drink. And I was just like, no, I, I got to, go do my food delivery job from like six o'clock to 12 to midnight every night. Mm. So it was definitely about staying consistent, staying dialed in. And I think the, the major momentum boost for me probably was around 
the two thirds mark. So when I was around fifty thousand, um, when I had fifty thousand dollars left, I think I was able to switch jobs at that point. I got a really good signing bonus and a pay raise and a promotion that my old job wasn't going to give me. And I think that was when I truly believed I was. I could see the finish line there. Um, I think through most of the process, I was like, yeah, I think I can do it. I'm just going to keep sticking to a plan. But it was like at that moment when I was only 50,000, which sounds like, which is still a lot. Um, but I truly believed in my mind that I could do this. And it was just a matter of time. Um, and it was going to be no more of borrowers, slaves to the lender. And I was just so fed up of having my entire paycheck just be eaten by debt payments, eaten by debt payments every month, every every biweekly period. It was it just drove me insane. Wow. All that sacrifice, all that hustle, all that grind. How's it feel now that you're the other side? Um, I, I can't express enough how the word financial peace um sounds. It, it's it's lovely. It was like when my first direct deposit hit and I was like just kind of in the mode where I was going to log on to um, SoFi, and now it's so long. (laughs) (laughs) So long, SoFi. I like that. I'm going to keep that one going, yeah. Yeah. So that's where the old student loan was sitting over there at that wonderful company Mm. called SoFi. (laughs) Oh, brother. Wow, way to go, man. Way to go. So it was worth it. The hustle, the grind, the hours, now you're free. You're 25, and you're 100% debt-free. Yes, I am. Way to go, brother. Very proud of you. We've got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. How Ordinary People Built Extraordinary Wealth, How You Can Too. I definitely think you're, that is your uh, future. I will predict that for you. It's uh, it's coming your way. Also, a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away to someone. Stir up a ruckus as you've been talking about this. Who was your biggest cheerleader as you went along? Um, I think it was my parents and my immediate family. Um they were very supportive, and they would always ask, like, how much, how much, how much have you gotten down? How much, how much uh, student loans are left? Yeah, your mom and dad um, got to be proud of you, man. You're a stud. Yeah, yeah. Well done. And then I, I told my friends, and they were all like a little skeptical at first, and but they would, they were supportive, and they weren't like encouraging me to do, um, go out and spend all my money. And, <laughs> and so, um, very good. Cool stuff, man. All right, Landon in San Diego, 148,000 paid off in 22 months, 73 up to 119 with a raise and delivering some pizzas. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt-free. Yeah! (laughs) That's how it's done. So we need to change our tagline around here. The Ramsey Show, getting people debt free for generations. That's exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> this is the Ramsey Show. personality is my co-host today best-selling author of the book paycheck to purpose as we talk to you about building wealth doing work that you love and creating and having amazing real relationships half of americans over 65 years old will need long-term care and the average cost of that care is over a hundred thousand dollars you got a plan for your long-term care needs now i talk to people all the time whose time uh, all, all the time whose plan is is to let Medicare pay for it. I got news for you people. Medicare won't pay for everything. And that's why I recommend long-term care insurance for people age 60 and over. It helps pay for nursing home care, assisted living and in-home care costs like medical equipment, 
helping help getting dressed, eating, home modifications so you can stay safely in your own home. And that way you get to keep your independence and your savings. Long-term care insurance protects your family too. Your spouse and kids won't have to bear all of the financial or emotional burden of caring for you. Uh, and it doesn't burn up and crack and scramble the nest egg and leave the other spouse behind with no money. So you need long-term care insurance once you're 60 years old. Our network of endorsed local providers will help you understand your long-term care insurance options and find the right policy for you. That's why they're Ramsey Trusted, because they'll put you first no matter what. So if you're 60 or over, it's time to connect with a trusted ELP and get your free long-term care insurance quotes. Visit RamseySolutions.com slash long-term care. We'll help you out. That's RamseySolutions.com slash long-term care. Jeff is with us. Jeff is in Boise, Idaho. Hi, Jeff. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, Waited to call in when both of you were co-hosting today because it's because of the two of you that my life has changed, your your teachings. Um, I know what you tell people, it's I'm the one that changed it, but Finding you guys and listening to your advice uh, has really changed my life, and I'm getting my bachelor's degree here in two more semesters. I'll be done. Been working full time, going to school full time. Good for cash you. flowing it, uh-huh. um, and so just super excited. But because talking to I've talked to Ken a couple of times on his show, and and I started doing a podcast last year. I'm in my second year this year. It's growing, um, and I've got just signed up to do a second podcast to produce and host that for another guy that wants to do it. But here's where my question for you guys today is um, I want to write a book, a guidebook here for a sort here in Idaho. And I know you guys put a lot of books out and I know Dave, you started many years ago with just one book, but um, is it better to self publish or go through a publisher? um, If you're, if you know, if you're writing a book, especially your first one starting out. Um, if you have a big platform and uh, a lot of marketing muscle, uh, a lot of notoriety, and you're going to sell a lot of books, you may want to consider a publisher uh, because okay. they will do all of the uh, the business side of publishing for you, meaning print the books, ship the books, bill for the books, collect the money, all that kind of crap, right? Um, right. I, you know, we've grown ours into a business, so we self publish everything here, but we're actually a very large publisher. Uh, and we were the seventh largest, uh, we were the number seven of the companies that put, uh, out of all publishers. And there's five really big ones, uh, out there uh, of people that put ship books on the New York, or not, not on the New York times, but on the bestseller list last year. So, uh, we were number seven. Uh, uh and so, but again, that's, we're, a sizable operation. So in your case, um, I'm going to guess and say, uh, I would start this book with a self-published approach. Um, cause I think a publisher might do you more harm than good. Uh, you might end up buying more of the books for your own use from the publisher after you sold it to them than you, uh, than they actually sell. Okay. okay. The average book in America with a publisher that goes out sells 8,000 copies. That's the average. Um, and uh, so most books don't sell a lot of copies, in other words. Uh, and, right. and the occasional book goes zoom, zoom. And, uh, you know, a million copies is highly unusual. Uh, so I think Ken's paycheck to purpose is right now, uh, somewhere around 250, 300,000 copies out the door. And we started it last fall, but we're a big operation and we know how to sell books. So highly unusual though. So all of that to say, I think I'd self publish it, uh, and you can control the marketing then, and you can control the cost and you can control when you want to use the book for something other than just selling a book. In other words, sometimes a really nice hardback book makes an excellent business card to right. hand to somebody, right. a promotional item to hand to somebody. But if you're buying your own book for $8 a piece that you could have printed for $2 uh, to give away, that, that starts to be prohibitive, right? Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, and so and like you hear me giving away like- a book, you hear me giving away books on the air here okay. for different things just as a gift right. to a caller in different situations. I got about $2 a piece in those. But if I was buying them back from my publisher, I'd have 8 or $10 in them. 
And that's what I was thinking. So it's it's good to hear your your perspective on that. And and I think too, just being more of a it's going to be a local guidebook. I think it would make more sense. So, but I was just curious what your thoughts were because um, I know you publish a lot of books because I've read all the ones you put out. So well, thank you. Um, <laughs> I, check out I Amazon. Know. I'm I'm not a fan of Amazon on everything. Sometimes they drive me nuts. Uh, and mm-hmm. I, I worry about them in a lot of ways, but in, in this situation, they have a self-published arm that you can do publishing on demand, meaning you put the okay. book up for sale on Amazon and they print them as they sell them for you. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a wee bit expensive that. per unit, but if you're going to move like a thousand units or something, you know, it's a lot easier to do that than it is to go through a publisher or to go to some printer and try to get a thousand books printed. That'll drive you nuts. Yeah, Jeff, if I heard you say guidebook a couple times, I believe I did. In this case, before I'd go through the self-publishing, I agree with Dave 100%, but before I would go through a full self-published situation, I would test out the concept a little bit. Uh, I would do uh, maybe shorter, not a full-blown trade book and whatever trim size that is. I'm sure you've done your research. I'd try out some smaller things, uh, some blog posts. I want to see what the appetite is. If this sounds like a local published product, I want want to test out the appetite for this and learn some things before I spend the time and the money uh, to self-publish a book. So I'm not in any way discouraging you to self-publish, but before that, uh, I would figure out what my local market is. What are people looking for locally? Plus, we've got tourism coming in, uh, and I would learn a little bit about that and test some concepts. Try three or four, five, six different, maybe smaller versions. So if you were to think initially of a, a maybe a guidebook that has like you know, 12 chapters in it, do one chapter two, and then, and let's see what happens and let's learn a little bit, because I think that those lessons can be learned quicker, a whole lot cheaper so that when we get to the stage of self-publishing, now we feel like we've got a market for this. There's a real market for, uh, what we used to call chapter books. Um, my friend Jim Collins did a book, uh, that they called it a monograph and basically it's like 37 pages. It's a chapter. And uh, then we did them. Uh, we've done four or five of them that have done very well. Uh, quick reads, we call them, and they're you know they're they're thirty to sixty pages, something like that. So Dr. John Deloney's book on anxiety, redefining anxiety, um, and we've sold over a hundred thousand of those. Uh, but it's like a fifty or sixty page. It's a little quick read. It's uh, and it hit the bestseller list. So uh, it was the first little effort he put out when he first came here. Um, and, um, uh, so we've got a handful of those that have come out. Um, and, and I'd probably, I'm with Ken, I'd probably, that it's uh, inexpensive. You don't even have to, you know, you obviously paperback, but sometimes you could do a staple bind on it where it's a fold over rather than having a spine to it. If you get, keep it small enough. And again, your, your cost of goods sold goes way down. You can publish it locally. You can print it locally there in Boise and you don't have to uh, end up with dealing with some printer in Chicago or something to get it done. And I would even try an ebook too, because an ebook is even less expensive. And if we prove concept now we can at least, you know, if you don't do a bunch of design, you just have a lot of options that I would test first. Yeah, Let's do a lot. Let's get some proof text in the marketplace with it. I agree. It's good stuff. It's a fun business. It's a fun business because very few people do it well. And so uh, the the landscape's wide open. (laughs) We'll see this week when the bestseller list comes out with John's new book, Hit the Street, this last week. So there we go. This is The Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. 
Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. We help people build wealth. We'll talk about that. Do work that you love. We'll talk about that and create real relationships that really work. And we'll talk about that. Talk about your life right here on The Ramsey Show. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Kevin starts off this hour in Saginaw, Michigan. Hey, Kevin, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Awesome. I just have a quick question. Me and my wife are moving into baby steps four, five, and six. Paid off all our bills um, just this past March. And um, question about four, five, and six is we're both federal employees. Um, I also have a military pension, spent 25 years in the Army. And we both um, have 5% going to TSP just to get that match. And I was wondering, um, because TSP, we've lost about 10% over the last six or eight months. Um, Should we work on paying off the home early um, instead of going up to 15% or or do both, I guess? I'm just afraid if we increase our um, TSP to 15% that we're just going to keep losing that extra 10 that we're going to throw in. I don't know what you're invested in in the TSP, but the C plan is not down 10% in the last six months. Um, so we have each of us have 60 in the C and and 40 in S. And that's down 10%. I think you're exaggerating. No, I, I just looked at our balances yesterday, and it's pretty much 10%. Okay. Do you really think that that's going to be that way for the next five years? No. Okay. I don't either. I mean, the market's down yeah. in general, but I didn't right. think it, I'm shocked to hear that that mix is down that far in that period of time. I really am. But um, I, I won't dispute you because I haven't looked at it. But the uh, um, I know the stock market is down in general. And so uh, right. but uh, that doesn't keep me from telling people to invest 15 percent of their income because the, that means the shares are on sale. Right. And that's everything I've been reading, too. Um, but again, before I pulled the trigger, I just kind of wanted to get some rein- reinforcement from, yeah, I, I would do um, the TSP to the match and then I would do a couple of Roth IRAs. Um, and if that doesn't get you to the 15%, I'd put a little more in the TSP to get you there, but I would be doing baby step four at 15% of your income going in and then, you know, work on getting the house paid off beyond that baby steps four, five, six, right. The, the, the work simultaneously, which is, um, what we teach there, um, Again, this economy is weird. In an inflationary economy where there's a labor shortage, we can't get workers in some areas, mm-hmm. um, and, and we're seeing you know people's paychecks um, going up. Oh, wages are up with wages inflation. Wages are way yeah. up. Everybody's mm-hmm. talking, saying wages aren't keeping up with inflation. Well, yeah, some aren't, but most are. Mm-hmm. And many times, in many cases, wages are causing the inflation mm-hmm. uh, because every loaf of bread you buy had to be. Uh, you know, put on a shelf by someone that's now making $20 an hour, used to make $10 an hour. And uh, guess what? That's built into that cost of loaf of bread. So you want to know why the loaf of bread went up? That's what it was. It wasn't the magic bread fairy that did it. It was the cost of putting the bread on the, oh, and by the way, the gasoline that or diesel fuel that delivered the bread uh, because of the Biden administration's energy policies have driven gas. They're responsible for that portion of inflation. The rest of it they're getting blamed for, but they're not responsible for. But either way, politics aside, arguing about that doesn't matter. The The bottom line is is that um, in, it's very weird in this situation. The stock market's down. That's right. Because companies, a lot of them are making more than they've ever made. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a gloom and doom. There's a black cloud over the market. There is, and then there's a lot of headlines out there, you know, that tend to make people freak out. You know, I saw a couple that popped up last week. Uh, there might be a recession, and then that's gone quiet. And I think what 
what's important, Dave, I'm glad you bring up this weird economy, is because we do have some artificial things that happen as a result of the pandemic, right? So you had a lot of infusion of cash from the federal government into the marketplace. Unemployment uh, was up and down. Now it's at historic lows, wages at an all-time high. The, the, the labor market is going to continue to be hot probably for the next couple of years just because there still is this gap uh, for employment. And they're looking for companies are fighting other companies, and it's a grand game of musical chairs, if you remember that elementary school game. Uh, but um, what I know, having worked here for almost a decade, from uh, watching the show before I ever became uh, a team member here, uh, watching what we teach, living what we teach, it is the financial peace principles, the baby steps that allow us to be in some ways recession proof. So don't freak out about inflation and recession because what our steps teach, I really believe this, is the discipline and the freedom to be able to pivot when you need to pivot. Recessions wow. are real and so is inflation. However, when we know where we're spending the money and we have some behavior attached to a budget, we don't have to be walking around like Chicken Little, the sky's falling, just because we see some negative headlines. Yeah, yeah. yeah but and, and here's the other thing that goes with this. We're not talking really about Kevin's question at that point. Um, but back to Kevin's question, uh, we do not teach to and have not lived mm -hmm. uh, for decades, uh, three of them so far, um, to uh, jump in and out of the stock market. That's right. You talk about the roller coaster Based metaphor. Based on what it's down. No yeah. one gets hurt on a roller coaster except those that jump off the middle of the ride. <laughs> That's so, right. Yeah. yeah, the market is down right now. It, it is down. Uh, when will it come back up? I do not know. That's right. I also try not to predict the weather. Um, and uh, those that do predict either one are scary people because uh, they're wrong most of the time and they get to keep their jobs. And it's amazing to me. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. But anyway, the uh, yeah, that, that's um, the, the thing you want to do is you want to have a long term mindset with your retirement planning. Yes. So you put money in mutual funds this month when it's down next month when it's up next month when it's down next month when it's up and you'll look up. And there'll be a million dollars in there. That's right. And you'll be going, well, how did that happen? Yeah. And no blood pressure or indigestion. If you're just, if you got a long-term view, which you teach and we've taught, you don't get all hung up in all this I, stuff. I, I, it's ridiculous how much I don't look at the daily news on it. I just don't even look at it. It's not because I'm scared of it. I just don't care. It doesn't change my decision. Well, at this point, you actually being the model for this whole thing, uh, it doesn't actually matter. No, because I'm not going to make a decision based on what it did today. Oh. I want to make a decision what it does over a long period of time, right. but not over what it did today right. or what it did in the last three months. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not that does not drive my decision making because I believe in the value returns on the stock market over the long haul. Why do I believe in that? So we've got 70 years with almost a 12% average annual rate of return on the stock market. Look at the S&P 500. It's 11.8% for 70 plus years. Wow. I that's extraordinary. I believe in that, <laughs> you know, and so if it's half of that, it ain't bad, you know, but that's the average so far. This is the Ramsey Show. On baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it.
Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. We're so glad you're here. Open phones at 888-825-5225. All right, guys, how many of you are thinking about buying a home, but you're cringing at the thought of paying off that debt for the rest of your life? With sky-high home prices, some people want you to believe that a 30-year mortgage is your only option. Do not fall for this. If you're not paying for your home with cash, your next best bet is a 15-year fixed-rate mortgage where the payment's no more than a fourth of your take-home pay. You'll pay off your house faster. You'll become a millionaire. You'll pay thousands less in interest. And, of course, the monthly payment is higher. And, of course, that scares some people. But you know what? You're ready. And if you're not ready, you shouldn't be buying. So don't be doing financial decisions fear-based. You need to make decisions that when you make them, you do it calmly with peace. The free mortgage calculator on our website can help. It'll give you an idea what your monthly payments could look like. That way, you'll know how much home you can afford so you can be mortgage-free in 15 years or less. Go to RamseySolutions.com, click the free tools to use our mortgage calculator and a bunch of other good stuff, and get confident about buying a home. Click free tools at RamseySolutions.com. Brandon is in Winston-Salem. Hi, Brandon. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave and Ken. How are you all doing? Better than we deserve. What's up? Uh, All right. So I'm just going to kind of give a brief overview of my current situation. Um, My wife and I are currently in Baby Step 2. We've got about $7,000 left on a car and then about $45,000 left on uh, student loans. We've been busting through them over the last year or so. Um, My wife is now seven months pregnant. Yay! Thank you, thank you. Um, And then she is actually getting ready to start on her online master's degree uh, for a nurse practitioner school. Um, We stopped uh, Baby Step 2 to save up for the baby a couple months ago. We've got about 6,000 saved up right now. Um, I am expecting to get around a ten to twelve thousand dollar bonus once I finish uh, the job I'm on. Um, probably around October time frame. Baby's due into July, um, so I'm just trying to figure out once we start back up with with the baby steps. Um, how much should I should I hold back for? Uh, the cash flowing of the master's degree, um, just maybe a little bit more padding for having the baby. Um, this is our first child, so I am I am a little nervous. Uh, yeah. Um, I, you don't but, need any uh, padding for the baby once the baby's here and healthy. You'll be okay. You just start learning to budget for diapers and formula. This is part of the form part of the, right. part of the process. There's not anything that's that's going to completely blow your mind. They're they're very very small at this stage. They do not eat a lot. Right. Okay. Um, so, so I guess the, they'll get uh, around to it, but not yet. You're right. going to be okay. Now, so I'm not worried about that. What's this master's degree costing? Um, it's about so right now she's part time. She's taking about three or four credit hours a semester, um, and it's right around uh, about two thousand twenty five hundred dollars uh, for three. Uh, credit hours. So going up to four credit hours, I'm guessing that'll be right around 3000 What's your household income going to be when she's back to uh, work? So I, my, I make right around 90 a year. Um, mm-hmm. That's with like vehicle allowance and uh, phone and stuff like that. My base is 80. It all mm-hmm. ends up being around 90. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she last year made right around 50 she actually just dropped down this a couple weeks ago to PRN, which is just picking up shifts. Um, but she is already scheduled out for two two shifts a week uh, for the next uh, two months. Well, I mean, she's, uh, she's in her she, third trimester. I mean, I'm talking about when she's back to work after baby. So she's making um, sixty, eighty thousand dollars a year. You're making ninety. Right. She's actually going to be staying home. So she's we're we're gonna or she's gonna stay at home with the baby. Okay, so uh, she's gonna quit or, work but go get her master's. I'm now I'm really confused. Well, once once she gets her master's, so the master's is a three year program. 
once it's a it's a dual masters. I don't remember exactly what the two are. I know it's nurse practitioner for like family and maybe uh, critical care. But the question um, is, is so she getting that for the long term after baby goes yeah, to school? Yeah. Once oh, so once, I'm sorry. I thought you meant like directly after she comes. So once she starts working again, I'm right around 150 thousand. No, is, I'm, is stop, stop. Okay. Is, when, yeah. She's getting a master's now to use it when. Once the baby is older, uh, so probably maybe two years in the future. Once she's been around, and then and then she'll start going back to work and getting, uh, and then we'll we'll send the baby to daycare. I, I I'm Which still is, confused. So two years from now, but it takes three years to get the masters. You're right. I, now I'm confused. Yeah. It'll well, be, Shortly, yeah, shortly after she gets the master, she will... Okay, how long is she not going to work? I guess until she gets her master's. Three she years. Might still, so still be picking up shifts while she's taking the master's degree. I am so freaking confused. Okay. Well, um, he, to be fair, he is too. He's not even sure what the dual master's program. I think yeah. this is a steak dinner, and let's all get on the same page. You guys need to figure this out because I, I don't understand why. Number one, you do not need to go get a master's to be a full-time mom, period. If that's right. the goal, I if the pause. goal is to stay home, you don't need to do that. Yeah, pause the master's. Pause it, okay? Number two, you guys, if you are, if she is going to use it and go back to work, great, Go get the master's. A PA is a wonderful thing. I'm I'm with you on the the career track is a great career track. If that if she's actually going to be in that career field, then the master's will ROI. You'll get a return on investment on it. But otherwise, you're just gathering up education certificates that you don't need. Um, and you want to use thermometer. You know you don't need more degrees. I mean so you but you if you're going to use them. That's fine. I'm game for it. So you guys need to decide that because that's going to tell you the urgency on paying for her master's. Because right now, my urgency is getting you out of debt yeah. so you can breathe. So if I had my druthers based on what I think I'm hearing, but I have no idea what I'm hearing, but what I think I'm hearing, I'm going to put the master's on hold, get out of debt, work a few shifts, be a mom. And once we're out of debt, then you can cash flow. She can work a few shifts to pay for the master's as she goes along here or there and begin restart the master's at that point. But just going to collect degrees, we're not going to – Ramsey doesn't tell you to do that. We believe in education. We don't, we're not anti-education, but we are against spending money uh, on education that does not have a marketplace use, and meaning you're not going to use it. And so people get upset with us for that. Deloney and I told a guy the other day, you know, he's going to marry this girl that wanted to go get a degree at a prestigious university and was going to go in deeply in debt to do it. And she had no intention on using it all. And we told him she's not marriage material. <laughs> and so we got a bunch of hate mail from him, but that's OK. Um, you know, because yeah. here's the thing. We're going to tell you what we would tell our own son or daughter, what we would tell each other because we're friends with each other, yeah. because we love you. Well, and that's is... what you're always going to get here. This is just common sense. She can she can go back into nursing once the baby once they've determined what that time frame is, and then be full time and blow through that masters. You know, I mean that's when we do it, but not now. They need that money to be paying off debt. I mean this is not urgent. Um, it, 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 you know, but they they've got to get on the same page. He doesn't even know what she's pursuing and why she's pursuing it. Now the time the time matters. The, the timeline yeah. matters because, but my, but I would like to see you, if she's not going to be working for a while, go ahead and get out of debt and then cash flow the master's. Yes. That would be my preference if she's not going to be working for a while. If she's going to go back to work fairly soon then, and the master's would accentuate that, then we can talk about piling it all up on top of each other and you guys cut into the bone on this. But um, that, that's the process. So, hey, thanks for the call. This is The Ramsey Show.
just found out some big news. Congratulations to our team in Ramsey Network's production. The documentary that we released last year, Borrowed Future, just won number one in the Webby Awards under the uh, category of documentary long-form video, cat- long video category. So there you go. Number one documentary. It's phenomenal. I feel like I should be handing you something right now. Like, is there an actual physical Webby? Uh, you know, like well, it's have- on the web, so it's it's virtual. So <laughs> I mean, I got they gave me they gave me Bitcoin actually. No, no. not at all. I'm kidding. No. Next segment, I'll bring some popcorn in. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, there we go. It'll be and we can have a fight. Food yeah. fight. Yeah. yeah. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt free stage, Scott and Julie are with us. Hey guys, how are you? Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Welcome. So good to have you guys. So where do you live? We live in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Ah, very good, very good. Well, welcome to Nashville. And here to do a debt-free scream, how much did you pay off? We paid off $262,000 in four years and nine months, and we also cash flowed $255,000 in that same period. Whoa, for what? Lots of stuff. Okay, all right. Uh, $145,000 of uh, home improvement projects. Whoa, okay. We had $35,000 for our wedding and $10,000 for my son's wedding. Mm-hmm. We had a love letter from the IRS for $40,000 <laughs> uh, that caused me to completely deplete my emergency fund, which then had to be rebuilt. Absolutely. And, and I also had to uh, borrow some money to pay back the IRS. Um, and your range of income during this four years and nine months? $188,000 to $480,000. Okay. <laughs> what do y'all do for a living? I'm an attorney and CPA, mm-hmm. and Scott is? Uh, IT project manager. Okay. All right. So the jump in income was the combining of the two households, I'm guessing. It, Sounds like you got married, and that's why it went from 188 to 480 It, it was twofold. Um, getting married certainly helped increase the family household finances. I took a new job with one of my uh, clients that has been very good to us as well. Ah, very good. Excellent. Excellent. So how long have you been married then? Uh, we have been married for about 20 months. We okay. had a COVID wedding. Ah, very good. Good for you. And I'm guessing the way the story went down that this is the paying off of the house. It was the paying off of the so house. So you are debt free. I'm looking at we, weird people. Yep. We yep. are as weird as you can get. I love it. Okay. So a lot of stuff going on in this story. <laughs> You guys have been busy bees. I'm just saying. There's a lot of things going on. So uh, back up a little bit and tell me what in the world happened here. (laughs) Well, we're going to start our Dave Ramsey journey in 2013, which is when Scott and I met. Okay. And at, at that time, I've always made good money, always took care of my money. So I thought, didn't have bills. I did have credit cards that I paid off every single month. And but I thought everything was good. I had savings, Mm -hmm. um, didn't have a lot of debt. Mm -hmm. And from our very first introduction, Scott and I were talking about values, which included a lot of money discussions from the very first day we met. Wow. And... He's a real romantic. Oh, no. Oh. We, we definitely. definitely. We, both are, we both are so romantic. <laughs> All right, let's get to the money. <laughs> well, it, it gets better, Dave. Within the first three months of Scott and I started to date, he, uh, he'd mentioned that he had followed the Dave Ramsey program for a long time. And right around month three, he handed me a budget worksheet. And he said... I've been using this budget worksheet since 1996. If we're going to be together, is this something you think you are willing to follow? And will you participate in following the budget that I've I've done for years? And I'm like, sure, I like the guy, why not? Lucky for me. Lucky for me. It it was the first written budget I had done in in my adult life. Yeah. And that was transformative for me Uh, Mm -hmm. in in doing a written budget. And I didn't realize at that time that Scott was just pulling me very, very slowly into the Ramsey cult. (laughs) Oh, hello. (laughs) (laughs) This is getting better. It it was a very slow process. It it took him about six full years. That's how the best cult leaders do it. I'm just saying. Okay. Yes. Gradual. (laughs) Gradual. I I had no idea what I was doing or what I was getting into. Uh, About a year or so after we had started dating, um, I was still using credit cards, um, got points, 
went on nice vacations with my points. It was awesome. And I paid them off every month. I didn't have a problem. A year into it, Scott challenged me to go 90 days without using a credit card. And I'm like, okay, fine, <laughs> I'll, I'll do that. And I stopped using my credit cards and I shaved $800 a month out of my budget. Oh. Um, which was, y- yes, I quite don't nice. Ha- I don't have a problem. No, uh, yeah. no, uh, no, I didn't have, <laughs> didn't have a problem at all. 90 days later, my credit cards were cut up and I've never used wow. a credit card since then. Man, he's smooth. Yeah, he's he, smooth. yeah, he just <laughs> and he's standing there watching you do this. For those that aren't uh, watching the show right now, he's just he just, he's just calmly he just going. I knew it was going to happen. This is my plan worked. <laughs> uh, yeah. I love it. This is great. Then the final step of me drinking all of the Ramsey Kool Aid happened about three years later. I was getting ready to buy a house. The house I was buying was a project house, had not been updated since 1967, mm. and I was getting ready to sign a construction loan for $160,000 in addition to the $262,000 mortgage that I needed to buy the house. And Scott didn't say a lot. Uh, we weren't married at the time. Um, he, he didn't say a lot, but just a few little things during the loan closing process. And two weeks before we were, th- before I was supposed to close on the loan, uh, I went to him and I said, I can't do it. I want to buy the house, but I don't want the $160,000 construction loan. And, and so I walked away from the construction loan, still closed on the house, but now I had a house that hadn't been updated since 1967 to renovate. And so that began a journey of saving a bunch of money, Doing, doing one bathroom, saving a bunch of money, doing another bathroom. So for about two years, um, it was just saving as much money as I could to do the next project. Wow. And, and so I did $145,000 of home renovations. That's the cash flow you're talking about? That's the cash flow. Okay, wow. I was, Scott, go back a second. 1997? 96. 96. Yeah, I just looked at, uh, I was looking at the binder today for the first time in a long time. It was July 96. So this, I'm teaching Financial Peace University with an overhead projector at this point. Right. In the hotel ballroom. Yes. And you were there. Yes. Wow. Yeah, my. uh, There were about 300 people a night in those days. And we broke up into small group discussions around in the sleeping rooms in the bottom of the hotel. Right. Yeah, Yeah, I I don't even think there were 300. I think the group I had was. 35 40 people it was oh, wow pretty, it was pretty small real early right oh my goodness but a- uh, and all of these years you've been doing this stuff yeah yeah it works, works. Hi- hiding in the weeds ready to pounce on julie when the time was right <laughs> 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 but like her you know I, I cut up my uh credit cards in 1997 and uh, or ni- 96 probably and i immediately cut hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month out of my out of my wow. budget and it was, my life was unchanged other than I had a bunch of extra money. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. so you started living it way, way back there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and have, I, I assume have lived completely debt free. Mm-hmm. And so the, the, the debt free scream is about your households combining mm-hmm. and yes. then the final steps of Julie f- paying this off. Is this, I'm getting the picture yeah. right now? Yep. Nailed it. Okay. Well, t- tell them what the, the aha moment. So, so there was an aha moment she, she's leaving out was, uh, uh Probably two years in, she goes. Uh, she we start comparing income and and uh, net worth, and she was she was very surprised. That even though she made way more money, I ended up with with a much higher net worth. So. I suspect. <laughs> I suspect it's unbelievable. I'm about to run out of time. I don't want to lose you. This is great. Scott and Julie, Detroit, Michigan, two hundred sixty-two thousand paid off in four years and nine months. What a great story. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two. two. One. We're, We're debt-free! Debt free. <laughs> <laughs> I love it! Wow!
Our scripture of the day, Job 23.10, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. Phillips Brooks said, do not pray for tasks equal to your powers. Pray for powers equal to your tasks. Okay, we ran out of time on that. Tim, Ken and I got mm-hmm. to spend a little more time with that couple at the break on that dead free scream. So let's unpack that the rest of the way because it's very interesting, actually. Oh, yeah. I think it's a case study in a sense. So he goes through Financial Peace University in 1997, 35 people in the room, he said, and I'm teaching it with an overhead projector and a bad suit. And that's how the whole thing started. <laughs> um and um, he was a, uh, a Saturn, a General Motors employee. And yes. That's why he was here in Nashville at the time, moved to Michigan back home, to transferred him back up there. Um, and as he said on the air, the surprising thing was his income was considerably less than her income as an attorney and a CPA. Mm. Uh, and yet when they actually compared net worth before getting married, she was kind of blown away because his net worth was four times hers. Um, and uh, and she's a millionaire. So he, he went through in 1997 – and is uh, Baby Steps millionaire? Oh yeah, we're at four point one million dollar net worth wow. now. And, uh, and it, I didn't ask his age, but I'm guessing in his fifties, probably something like that. Yeah. And uh, might be forty. I don't know, but I think he's in his fifties. And so um, <laughs> is, is he? Is he? He's, he's out there in the he's lobby grinning. shaking his head. He's, he's in his fifties. We got We got yeah. We got go, I'm going with that. Sticking with it. Okay. So I wonder if he has. I, I want Scott. If you've got pictures from that group, you got to We got to capture that because I just. <laughs> I think of that. That's I probably legacy. had a little bit of a comb over. Because I, I for how many years have you been saying that projector bad suit joke? As yeah, well, it's, it's not a joke. It's what was happening. <laughs> I know, but okay. people want to see that suit. Yeah, but the uh, oh, there's pictures of it around here. <laughs> but the uh, 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 the point is, I, what I was saying, you and I are walking back in. I wish yeah. I could have. I wish I had a time machine to yeah. go back and tell that class that that's what's going to happen to him. Yeah. And then he subtly works with his new fiance. Oh, sure. Marriage. And she gets out of debt. She's a millionaire. Uh, and, but she gets up her credit cards and following this plan. And now they're going into a whole nother mode yeah. with a combined $5 million plus net worth. Um, and they're going to be worth tens of millions of dollars. But this is what happens. Uh, it, it, you know, and you go, I oh, wish I had known this. Well, he did. He did. He absolutely and he did, did it. Yeah. And he played all the way through sure from 1997. So uh, pretty, pretty cool. It's amazing because he showed us during the break earlier uh, his binder. And it's literally put together. It's not in tatters. I mean, he, he lived it. And it is pretty extraordinary if you think back to those years. You know, you're we telling three people. hole punched all that stuff by hand. <laughs> yes. Put the lessons into those three ring yeah. binders and slid color yeah. stuff that we ran off at Kinko's, slid the, into those uh, binders, bought at Staples is how sure. we used to do that. Because right. you're doing 35 of them. You're not ordering them, you know, a carton of them from Chicago, no. you know. So, uh, you know, that's how, but, it, but the principles were the same. That's right. Uh, and they worked yeah. and here he sits and yet you are 24 years old out there and you want to argue with this. Yeah. Mm. Um, when you weren't even born yet when he started. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so, you know, you know, this is what's called a proven plan and I'm not bragging on me. I'm bragging on. The stuff that we teach mm-hmm. works, yeah. and there you are. So where do you want to be a couple of decades from now? You know, you you know, you really think Bitcoin's going to get you there? That's dumber than a rock. Mm-hmm. Do you really think nothing down real estate's going to get you there? That's dumber than a rock. You really think index universal plans are going to get you there? That's dumber than a rock. Uh, none of these things have any data points over decades that show you that you're going to be a multimillionaire doing following it they just don't no there's no you can't find people out there walking around with a three-ring binder from 1997 that did that stuff and ended up with they're not there they're not there and and so but this stuff this gods and grandma's ways of getting a job doing work that matters same thing you're going to run into them a couple decades from now and um you know, uh, 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 the person is going to walk in here and go, you know, I was making fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a year. Mm. Heard your radio show. Wow. 
I got paycheck to purpose and I follow this plan. They're walking around with an old tattered copy of paycheck to purpose. Mm. And they go, you know, now I'm making $250,000 a year and I, I run three companies, you know, and it's just, that's, that's what you're going to hear. And that's yeah. because he's proven common sense, integrity based yep. values based decisions that we have taught and continue to teach in every area of life on the that's Ramsey right. show and all throughout the Ramsey curriculums all through here from Ramsey plus to entree leadership elite and all these different things that we get have around here all have that same net effect. They all are tied back to God's and grandma's common sense. Yeah. If you want to prosper, there's a process. It's just this, it's just this apple, the, the absolute simple facts that any prospering in any of your life, whether it's nutrition, physical exercise, marriage, parenting, money, work, uh, there is a process by which you need to figure out, or in this case, Ramsey Solutions provides you the process, and it's going to allow you to prosper. And quit looking for the shortcut. Well, that's right. My that's, gosh. That's really the issue there. Ugh. All right. Jason is with us. Jason is in Seattle. Hi, Jason. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you, Dave. Nice to talk to you. I'm a long-time listener. Um, so um kind of run through my my numbers here before I get to my question. Right quick, because uh, we're short up on time. Okay, sounds good. So we have a mortgage of 190 k 1700 a month, 15-year, 2.5 interest, uh, and student loan debt about 13500 No car debt, no other debt. Okay. Um, college, college savings for our daughter is like roughly five k. Um, All right, what's your question, Jason? And so my question is, um, I'm, I'm potentially got an opportunity to move jobs, but the pay decrease would be equal to about 33000 a year. Why would you want to do that? Um, the reason I, well, the, I would be going from private sector to public sector, and I would get a guaranteed pension. Um, Who through gives the public a crap? Sector. That's awful. And, yeah. The guaranteed pension is a carrot that does not actually exist. It's not worth it because you can grow your income over the next three, five, seven, ten years, and that's where you invest with the strategies that we teach here. That pension is not worth what you think it is. Not to take a thirty-three thousand dollar hit, quite frankly, not to take, take a three dollar hit. Thirty-three thousand and invest it, you'll have a lot more than the pension, right? Okay. Why? All right. That That's answers a, my question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take, take, stay in the private sector, make more money, and you handle your life. Yes. Don't look for someone to give you a life, uh, particularly the government. Um, yeah. I think you're going to have a whole lot better result. I know you'll have more money if you put thirty three thousand away per year than a pension will ever pay you. Dave, there's a there's a hook there that that's not just something that Jason asked. We were talking about this the other day uh, with you and the Ramsey personalities. What is it about that? He used the phrase "guaranteed pension" that would make someone consider a thirty three thousand dollar hit. Um, it's a mistaken view of what a guarantee is. Right. Um. Yeah. It, it's. I guarantee you, if you have thirty three thousand dollars. That when you put it in a jar, you'll still have $33,000, <laughs> you know, and if you put it in an investment that went up a little bit, you'd mm-hmm. still have 33000 plus some, and you'd have more than a pension. I, I mean, it's a mathematical guarantee. So, but the, what you're looking for there, if you're not careful emotionally is someone else to take care of you instead of you taking care of you. Yes. Them. I think that's The right. self-determination always makes you wealthier than other people providing you the you know what what you need to win and so if you're waiting on the government to fix you if you're waiting on a secure job if you're waiting on corporate america to fix your life if you're waiting on your mama to do it when you're if you're waiting on someone else to fix your life your life's always going to suck and uh we all have a little of that we all would Mm -hmm. like to for mama to cook our bacon and eggs every morning and we didn't ever have to clean the pot you know and uh, but you know the, when you grow up is when you realize you got to cook your own bacon that's eggs, right. and that's not picking on somebody who has a a job. But don't look for security where it isn't, and it's a misnomer there. And uh, mathematically, it's a misnomer. So it's a good question, Jason. Thank you for calling in, Ken. Good show today. Good Thank show you, to sir. James, to Ben, to Kelly, Zach in the booth. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace. Christ Jesus.
Hey folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? To get your daily dose of advice on life and money, check out all of our shows from The Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts.